Welcome back all the fans and followers of space fiction. I just got back from a cinema on the fourth planet around the star Vega and I realized one thing. Artificial gravity in movies doesn't work properly. Why? I'll explain right away. You can achieve artificial gravity in two ways. Either replace it with another force, or you can create an object that will generate gravity with a force similar to that on Earth. The first method was mostly understood correctly by all filmmakers. In the films, they place spaceships with rotating parts for the crew, in which a centrifugal force acts on all objects. If a person gets out of this rotating object, or if he moves to its center, the artificial gravity disappears. And that's correct. However, many sci-fi films take centrifugal force technology obsolete and take a shortcut with the second method. These spaceships contain a device in the floor that generates artificial gravity on board without the need to move the spaceship. I'm not saying that such a technology will not be invented one day. However, it will have a completely different impact on the crew, the spaceship and the spacecraft surroundings that we imagine in the movies. First, let's talk about the general rules of gravity. Most importantly, you cannot just turn gravity off and on. Gravitational force is a manifestation of matter. So without matter of the right mass, there can be no gravitational force. And if we want to achieve a gravitational force equal to that on the Earth's surface, we need a body of the same mass as the Earth. And here comes some future science. Of course, no spaceship will carry a planet the size of Earth. Instead, it should contain an object or device that can generate this mass. Such as a supermassive object with a size larger than the event horizon of a given body. Nobody wants to come into contact with a small black hole. The event horizon is a 9 mm for our Earth. So if we could compress the mass of the whole Earth into a 9 mm grain, a black hole would form from the Earth. So, for example, all you have to do is to compress the mass of the Earth to a size of 1 meter, and this object will act on your surroundings with the same gravity as the Earth. We could also create the same gravity with a fast rotating object of lower mass. If the object rotates at a speed close to the speed of light, its weight begins to increase. Thus, in theory, a mass similar to that of the Earth could be achieved with a less massive body. But what will be the effect of such a device on the spaceship and its surroundings? Probably not exactly as you would expect. No matter how large the gravity generating device would be, its force would always be directed to the center of this body. It is therefore unrealistic for a spaceship as flat as a plank to have artificial gravity all over the deck acting perpendicular to the floor. Gravitational force has no boundaries to stop it. So if you create a gravitational field as strong as Earth in a spaceship, its range will be as large as Earth's gravitational field. It will therefore attract all objects not only from the surrounding area, but also from a distance of millions of kilometers. If such a spaceship approaches a planet, it would act on that planet as if Earth were flying around it. It would therefore cause at least a change in the orbit of that planet. In the worst case, if it was a smaller planet, it would start orbiting the spaceship like the Moon. Of course, the far reach of gravity would also be reflected on nearby planets and spaceships. Tidal phenomena would be massive. 
The planet's gravitational field could be disrupted to the point of tearing it apart. And the most importantly, the mass of the gravity generating body would add to the mass of the entire spaceship. Thus the spacecraft would no longer only have say 100 or 1000 tons, but would therefore weigh 6 sextillion tons. And what would that mean for our spaceship? That there is no such powerful engine that can move such a heavy object. So it will be immovable. So, if you want to use artificial gravity in the film in the future, you also need to think about whether it's not complete nonsense. Thank you for watching and the next time I fly by the Earth, I will send you another new video from the world of space fiction.